That's actually one of the worst looking things I've ever seen in my life. Now on Recipe Rewind, we go big. Oh man, I'm gonna like that. That's delicious. We explore the history of bread pudding and look at interpretations of the dish from around the globe, each steeped in their own history, from Latvia, Middle Egypt, Mughal India, and Medieval England. This special two-parter welcomes you back to... Alright, so which one do you think looked best? Um, probably not the English one over there. Not the English one? No. Just looks kind of butt, is it? Oh, but you can kind of see why. I mean, bread pudding has been a staple of the lower class diet for thousands of years. But some cultures took it in a more elegant direction than was ever meant for the most frugal of dishes. If we're going to delve into history, then a place we have to visit is the British Museum. With over 8 million works in its repertoire, it holds one of the most comprehensive collections in existence. Documents of the British Museum explore human history from the very beginning of our records, and bread pudding was right there. These are the Babylonian Yale tablets, which date back to 1700 BC, much the same period as these artifacts here. Inside, they describe the life and routines of Hammurabi's palace, in which it details over 300 types of bread, some given special shapes, including a woman's breast, because humanity never matures. One recipe describes a sort of bird meat pie, and another that calls for bread to thicken a soup. But what they did with stale bread was most interesting. They'd allow it to ferment and then use it to make beer. Not only do you get alcohol from this, it acts as storage for the grain during the winter months. Ingenious! The Romans later imparted this knowledge over Europe, which brings us to medieval England, often a minefield of historical cuisine. By that, I mean doctors back then believed that most things that were actually delicious and edible, depending on how you ate them, killed you or made you a demon, like strawberries. <laughs> and this is the period where bread pudding takes its root. Sop was a popular medieval lunch. It would consist of soup, often served with stale bread. The liquid of the soup would soften the bread and make it edible again. Then when it came to dessert, stale bread was likely initially sweetened with milk and later currants were added, thus leading to the modern bread pudding. So, our first bread pudding comes to us from medieval England in 1390. It's a squelchy bread pudding coloured red with wine and made worse with egg. With the usual blend of medieval spices served with coriander confit, which can easily be replaced with dried coriander and sugar. Okay, first thing we're going to do is lightly toast the bread. Right, what do we do now that that bread is toasted, Eve? So now we want to mix the egg and the wine together. Egg and wine? Yeah, it's actually quite common to use, Ben. Oh, that's disgusting, and that's why I stick to the smooth, strong taste of old Hocking Rum. Okay. Break one egg white into a bowl and mix with the wine. Pour the honey, spices, and raisins into a pan and heat until warm. This is just mulled wine, Ben, but with egg. Look at the f***ing, look at the egg. No, I'm gonna, I can't look at that. After that, add the bread. It's exactly as I thought it would turn out. <laughs> I can't even look at this. The you, egg's the worst bit. Can you hold the camera a bit? I can't be here. I don't know if I'm gonna even eat this. That's actually one of the worst looking things I've ever seen in my life. Top off with the coriander and sugar. How's that look? That looks f***ing grim. Which is funny because 150 years earlier, the Egyptians were doing something much more tasty, much more delicious, and much more elegant. <laughs> oh. I thought I was going to be sick. Can we, can we just get on more because I feel awful? It's time for me to leave the British Museum and make my way to the Victoria and Albert Museum in Kensington. The objects in this case are all decorated in a style that developed during the first century Mamluk rule in Egypt and Syria from the 1250s to the 1350s, when the Sultanate was at the height of its power. This is where our dish was born. The dish is called Om Ali, Mother of Ali, named after the first wife of Mamluk Sultan Yazid al-Din Ibak, who ruled during the 1250s. Women weren't technically allowed to be sons, but they could be the guardians of their sons until they came of age. So in 1257, when the Sultan died, the Sultan's first wife, Omar Ali, had an argument with the Sultan's second wife, Shashar al dur over who would be the successor. In actuality, Shashar al dur had the Sultan murdered for her own power ambitions by bribing his servants to drown him in his own bath. They were later tortured and killed for this information. 
Shashar was consequently threatened with execution, but a separate faction rescued her and kept her up in a tower. During this, Omar Lee's son, Al Mansur Anli, only 15 years of age, became the Sultan. So, the Sultan's maids broke in to Shashar al Dur's tower and beat her to death with her own slippers, because Egyptian maids were total badass ninjas. Then, because the medieval ages were known for civility, she was stripped naked, thrown off the top of the tower, and dropped in the moat. So, to commemorate the most macabre of celebrations, Omar Lee ordered her chefs to distribute the most delicious dessert they could think of all around the land. And this is what they made. Our second bread pudding comes from Mamluk, Egypt in 1257 and is still popular in the region today. It consists of puff pastry covered with nuts and raisins, immersed in cream and milk with a hint of vanilla. So, first thing you want to do is let the puff pastry defrost and then you want to cut it up into 10 little squares. And then you want to preheat your oven to 200 degrees. Lay the pastry flat. Whilst that's cooking, you want to add the milk, cream, sugar and the spices in a pan and let it simmer. Don't forget vanilla essence and the rest of your cream. Now it's simmered, you want to turn the heat off and put it aside. Right, eat the pastry's ready. So what we want to do is we want to shred it all into little pieces. Get your nut mix. You want to put that on the puff pastry? Ooh, it's looking sweet already. After the nuts and the coconuts are on it, you've got the second nut of the shredded puff pastry. Spread it about on top. All right, that looks great. And then we're going to want to cover it with a milk mixture. Once that's covered and it looks great, we're going to put that aside for 15 minutes and let the milk absorb. If it doesn't need more milk, it can go straight in the oven. Straight in the big one? <laughs> okay, alright. Mmm, Omar Lee. Wow! That's in the oven now. And while we're waiting for it to cook, let's follow the Omar Lee's journey as it travels further east. Stay tuned for part two to journey with us to Latvia and Mughal India as the four dishes face off to see who's the tastiest. Best bread pudding I've ever had. And who's the worst? Oh god, that's disgusting.